So um, I won't start with uh, the obvious question, who's heard of Postgres? Um, but I, I will ask, uh, who's ever written a patch for Postgres anywhere on your laptop? Doesn't need to have been submitted. Who's ever edited the Postgres source code for any reason? Come on, Peter, I know you have. One, two, three, four, was that? <clears throat> Is that time? Should we get started? Cool. Um, okay, um, my name's Simon Riggs, and I'm going to talk to you today about Postgres development. Um, the uh, Postgres project is an advanced database server. I hope you got that bit. Um, it's open source licensed, which means a couple of things. It means you can use the code, but it also means you can contribute the code back. And that's one of the themes that I'm going to talk to you about today is, is contributing back. Uh, so it's been around for 25 plus years. Uh, different people count the start date from different times, just to confuse us. Uh, but it's been around for more than 20 years, right? So a long time. Uh, now, sometime in the past, uh, we only had a couple of hundred thousand, uh, thousand lines of code. Uh, but it's actually been going up by uh, quite a considerable number of lines of code every release. Uh, so that now we have more than a million lines of code uh, in the, uh, the Postgres repository. It is written in highly portable C. Uh, now, it's also very structured C. So if you're used to some modern languages where you're used to lots of libraries and structure, then that's exactly what you're going to get from Postgres. Um, there's an open engineering process, uh, but it's also a very carefully managed development process. Um, this is a slide that I'll return to a couple of times. Uh, new contributors are very welcome. Uh, the purpose of me giving this talk today is to encourage you, all of you, to contribute in some way to the de development of Postgres. Why? Because software that is not maintained is dead software. Okay, So everybody needs to contribute to that to make sure that it stays alive. Uh, now you might sort of think that uh, there are so many contributors and so many developers that you personally couldn't possibly make a difference. Well, uh, Peter over there has been contributing longer than I have. Uh, I've been contributing for 12 years uh, and it's been uh, mostly a, a very happy process. I've got a lot out of it uh, personally. Um, what, uh, what I would uh, point out is that uh, not all of the people that uh, have been contributing uh, contribute for that length of time. Uh, in fact, it's a bit like the NFL uh, in that there's an awful lot of people passing through and only a couple of guys staying there for uh, like a decade. Um, so uh, we definitely need your support. There are some senior people that have stopped contributing uh, over time, and you need to get involved, okay? Um, uh, I can admit to being slightly over 50, uh, so I think you can do the math on that and work out how many years it's going to be before I stop contributing. Uh, so there needs to be people coming in at the bottom end uh, to, to make that work. Peter's sitting there thinking, that's fine, I've got like 80 years left before I'm that old. So. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm going to talk about is, is what the development process is. And uh, you may have heard, or there may be sort of stories in the bar about it being very difficult to get a patch accepted into Postgres. Uh, and, well, you know, yes, it is. Uh, but that's because people don't really understand that it's a, a complex process and it's not easy to just simply uh, contribute. Uh, to that. It's the same thing uh, as saying how many people have uh, submitted a successful law through Congress. It's not many, but does that mean that new laws are not worth uh, trying to pass? Well, perhaps a different subject. Um, <clears throat> but um, um, <coughs> hopefully uh, contributing to Postgres is a lot easier than 
getting a, a bill through Congress. If you are just interested in being a developer, that's easy because all you need to do is type git clone and then uh, the address and then you can clone that onto your laptop. If you don't know what a command line is, then I think we're probably going to lose each other over the course of this talk somewhat. Um, uh, then all you need to do is edit one of the files and do the, uh, the normal dance of configure, make, make, install. Now that makes you a developer. Okay, that does not make you a contributor. A contributor is somebody that actually takes something that they've done and gives it to the Postgres project. Okay, so it, there's, the, there's a lot of people that are developers and not as many that are contributors. Okay, so what I'd like you to be is a contributor. Okay, now <clears throat> if you don't want to give back to the project, you can publish your work uh, under some paper and submit it to uh, some conference or other and you can uh, get a patent or, or just merely a publication. So there's lots of people in the world that uh, contribute research uh, uh, but don't actually publish that back to uh, the PostgreSQL project. Now uh, there are also some that do, so uh, the uh, research projects on the left there, the Axel Forecast and SPGIST projects are example or, uh, examples of research projects that were funded by governments and have put work back into the Postgres project. Uh, and then the ones on the right, and I'm not meaning to uh, be petty about it, uh, but just to say that there's a lot of research going on uh, that doesn't necessarily flow directly back into the project, but it's contributing ideas uh, and it, it also means that Postgres is uh, one of the most popular projects in the world uh, for doing database research because uh, the source code is easily accessible and it actually makes sense. Uh, so one of the most recent ones was the Axel project, uh, analytics on extremely large data. Uh, we contributed uh, features for security, uh, performance, and things like visual analytics. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, development funded by companies, and that's all different types of companies. Um, obviously, I haven't listed every single company on there. Uh, some are not there because I've just missed them off. Uh, some are not there because they don't actually contribute uh, and so what I would like to mention to you is please do check that the people that you're working with actually contribute to the project uh, rather than just claim to be uh, uh, experts in uh, the particular topic that we're discussing. Uh, some uh, companies like NTT, uh, uh, the uh, largest telecommunications company in the world, contribute very significantly to uh, PostgreSQL development um, and then there's lots of other different types of companies involved as well. Who controls the project? Uh, well some people might lead you to believe that they control the project or in fact it's controlled by a, a single company or entity uh, but the truth is it's a multi-company, uh, multinational uh, project where people literally from all over the world contribute. Uh, so if you go to Japan, there's a very large user group there with full-time staff members. They're, they're employed by the user group uh, to organize things and actually it's a, it's a bigger organization than it is in America or, or Europe even. Um, so there's actually a very wide interest uh, in uh, PostgreSQL wherever you go in the world, whether that be South America or Europe or uh, uh, lots of different places. The, the, one of the, the, the difficulties for, for people to understand is when you say it's an international project, some people just don't kind of get what that means. That means like, oh right, so the docs are in Italian or something, right? That's, no, no, if you go to Italy, there's a huge re user group in Italy and in Japan, and there's lots of interest. Uh, there's people submitting translations, there's people submitting patches, there's, there's a lot of uh, activity all across the world. Um, 
there are, of course, alternate versions of Postgres. And uh, sometimes uh, that work has been forked, uh, and sometimes that's been spooned, uh, meaning that there, there's some sort of tracking release going on. Uh, I'm very pleased to note that there is not a uh, major fork of Postgres in an open source sense. Uh, some other open source communities have, uh, have managed to sort of split up over time and go lots of different ways. And actually, I'm uh, very happy to say that the Postgres project has always managed to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, avoid such difficulties. And we, even though uh, there are sometimes difficulties and disagreements, uh, there are major strides taken to keep the community together so that there is just a single PostgreSQL uh, that everybody uses. And that actually is one of the greatest strengths, uh, I think, that uh, uh, the project has, is its uh, community spirit and its teamwork. So how is the project organized? Well, uh, almost, uh, uh, well, I'll say, all of the commits to the code repository are managed by a, a small group of uh, people, the committers. Now, in some software projects, you get a very large number of committers involved. And in fact, it's uh, kind of uh, a low-level badge of merit to become a, a committer in, in some projects. Now, the Postgres project uh, unashamedly does not do that. It does take a long time to become a committer. Um, and to some people, that is uh, a negative aspect. Well, what we think uh, is that uh, it's difficult to write and maintain uh, the database software in the shape it is now. And actually, it requires significant experience, both uh, experience in terms of working as a team, but in terms of uh, code contributions. Uh, so actually, uh, the, the, the status of committer is not granted easily to people. Now, that does not uh, mean that the people that uh, contribute their time or their code to Postgres are not worthy of merit. And actually, there's a separate merit system uh, in Postgres where uh, contributors are mentioned uh, on a uh, specific web page, and we go to great lengths to uh, put individual credits uh, in, in particular places. So if you do manage to get a patch accepted, it will have your name against it for all time in the release notes. So, so the, uh, the project uh, does uh, go out of its way to, to recognize people. Now, that's uh, a good point because there's unfortunately uh, always a, a factor involved in uh, contributing in, in the thought that is somebody contributing just simply to get their name in lights? Uh, and if that's the thought that's motivating you, it's probably going to lead to quite a shallow contribution. Uh, and as, as a result, is probably going to lead to your work getting rejected. So uh, if you uh, make a, a full and deep contribution, then it will uh, more likely be accepted. Um, in fact, I remember uh, Peter's probably going to say, why do you keep mentioning my name? But um, uh, my first patch, um, uh, I thought, oh, this is brilliant. It really works. It does everything. Uh, and then actually it was Peter that came along and said, well, El, you should design it like this, and it should have all these bits hanging off it. And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> I can't possibly do that. Uh, so I spent a week sort of deciding whether to commit suicide or not um, <clears throat> because my work had been uh, uh, criticized publicly and all this kind of stuff. Um, and actually, what you've got to realize is that uh, it's absolutely nothing of that sort, okay? Uh, there is always discussion about any idea that comes forth and uh, whatever you thought uh, about your own ideas or contributions, there's always something somebody else can do to add to them to make them better. Okay, And it does require a little bit of patience, perhaps maturity, to see that that's the case. Okay, 
Um, and uh, I don't mind saying there's nothing I've thought of in this project that hasn't been improved by somebody else saying some comment. I've, I've never, ever contributed something and it just went straight through without improvement. Obviously, it went through, uh, it, they received many comments, uh, but I'm saying I, I never had an idea that was not improved through feedback from somebody else, okay? Now, that is a, a stark difference to the way that uh, things work in companies where almost all of the code that you write is never inspected by anybody. Your boss just says, did you finish it yet? Yeah, and he doesn't bother to like check the code or even, you know, doesn't hardly check with the QI guide to see whether it works. You know, it's just, did you finish it? Yeah, so the, the Postgres process is significantly different from most software development. And that's one of the reasons why it's harder to get your code accepted, because we've got very high quality standards. Uh, and if you're not used to that, and I have to say, when I arrived, I was not used to that, um, then you, you will falter. You're going to uh, have a big problem with the process. But if you understand that it's a peer review process where people are actually going to look at every single line of code that you wrote and comment on it, and they've got good comments because these are clever people. Now, why are they clever people? If you're a Postgres developer, does that make you clever? No, that's not true at all. It's just that all across the world, there's a lot of people involved, and so just by, uh, by chance, by randomness, you're going to get a load of people, and many of them will be cleverer than you. Okay, that's the, the, that's the, the, the way the world works. So don't be put off when you get lots of comments back on your code. It's part of the process and it is well intended. Okay, and if you play with that correctly, it's going to end up uh, both a good thing for you and a good thing for the project. So let's have a look uh, more about the way that the project's organized, uh, because if you understand the way the project's organized, then you're going to stand a better chance of getting uh, your contributions accepted. And, I, and I'll say it again, we definitely want your contributions. So there's a, uh, a release team, uh, a security team, uh, a server monitoring and management team, uh, and a core team uh, that provides oversight. Now, the, uh, the main process for code contributions is something called uh, a commit fest, uh, which uh, I will talk about in terms of the actual release process. So the, uh, the current stable release is 9.5.2. Uh, the current uh, release that's in development is 9.6. We work to a, approximately an annual release cycle, uh, and each release uh, takes just slightly longer than that because we overlap the releases uh, slightly. Uh, there's a maintenance release every three months, uh, and uh, maintenance releases may be triggered by extreme bugs. So if you're developing something, you need to develop it uh, in a way that follows the process, but also in a way that follows the timing of the release itself. If you submit something a week after freeze, it's going to wait a whole year. Okay, um, and as some people do, they think, oh, well, that's fine. I'll submit it the week before freeze, and then it gets rejected, and then they have to wait a whole year. Okay, so if you're too clever with the process, then you're going to wait around a long time. So the thing to do is engage with the process, work with it in its timing, and then you'll be successful. So the uh, development schedule is we tend to have uh, a meeting once a year where we chew through a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then we have these things called commit fests uh, that are uh, incremental phases within the development cycle. So each year we'll get this cycle happening. And now we, uh, each year we tweak it slightly, but it's kind of roughly this each time. So there's four commit fests. Uh, and then we move through the, uh, the main uh, part of the release process. Uh, each commit fest has a separate commit fest manager, 
uh, and then there's a release management team that guides us through the remainder of the process. Uh, some, of, some of these things are new, some of these things have been around for a while. So what the hell is a commit fest? Well, what we used to do in the old days was there was a big queue of patches and people took stuff out of the uh, patch queue and committed it. And what we found was that uh, if, uh, well, for whatever reason, your patch may have lingered on the patch queue for like two years without anyone looking at it. So what we decided was that we were going to have a, uh, a process where uh, we would collect all the patches and then every commit fest we'd clear the whole patch queue. Okay, now that's almost successful, but there are some things that uh, get pushed back from uh, commit fest to commit fest where people can't really decide what to do. So uh, we do our best to, to clear things each commit fest. Um, <coughs> so everybody likes to develop their own code, and, uh, and yet all code must be reviewed prior to commit. So uh, obviously, uh, the math is that uh, if everything needs to be reviewed, uh, then every uh, code contribution needs to be matched by one review contribution. So if you wish to be a code contributor, you need to understand that you probably need to commit as much review time as you do development time. Okay, that's the math. Um, now, some people get it, some people don't. Now, early developers don't tend to get it, but I'm trying to get the message through to everybody uh, that that's what you need to do. So if you submit a patch, you probably need to review somebody else's patch as well. Okay, um, quid pro quo. Um, now the commit fest manager will run the process smoothly and uh, they do so via a commit fest application, uh, which is shown there. Um, <coughs> now, I think over time, some developers move through to a, a greater number of reviews and are basically after quite a long period of doing just development, uh, I've kind of realized that I needed to change my game uh, and I've started doing a lot more reviews now rather than a lot of personal development. Uh, not because I wasn't successful at development, it's just that uh, the, the situation is that we, we need reviews just as much as we need development and there's unfortunately a lot of people that are, uh, that are focused on the development side of things. So we need more review. Uh, so the development statistics are uh, both encouraging and discouraging. We have four commit fests a year, which means that we have around 250 features or patches in every release. Now, you may say, well, how do I judge against that? Well, uh, Oracle was heard to say that they had 300 features in their latest release. Uh, now, the good news is that uh, that means that um, if Oracle release every other year and we're doing 250 features a year, then uh, PostgreSQL has got 200 features per, uh, uh, per release. No, that'll be 100 features per release more than Oracle does on average, okay? So PostgreSQL is developing more features each release than Oracle is, okay? So that's a good number to take to people when you say, how is it that the PostgreSQL project can, can be doing what it's doing? It's because we've got a lot of people involved and they're contributing uh, a lot of work, but that doesn't mean we don't need more, okay? Uh, so we could actually accelerate this process if we had uh, more reviewers and more contributors. Uh, now I am happy to say that the 9.6 release has been better than normal uh, and we've had a lot more reviews, so we actually got more through in this release. Now the success rate for patches uh, it depends, we can discuss exactly what we mean by success. Um, but what I can say to you is that if you submit a patch and you expect that patch to get committed, you have got approximately 0% chance of that being true. Okay? Almost every single patch goes through about three different versions and if it's a big feature, you can expect it to go 10, 20, in some cases 30 versions 
of a patch before it finally gets committed. And some features have taken more than five years to get through the process completely. Okay, uh, So uh, some might say that's hard. Some might say that's a, a, a hard quality bar. But the, the point is, uh, everybody appreciates Postgres's uh, quality and its feature set and it's hard to come up with something that is genuinely worthy of adding to that okay so uh, please understand that so don't know if I got through to you before but uh, the project is looking for new contributors uh, we welcome contributors who uh, work for companies or whether you're doing it in your spare time it doesn't matter okay uh, a lot of people started doing stuff in their spare time and then went into it more professionally. Uh, there's an awful lot of people in the world uh, that have got a few hours to spare uh, and uh, the skills to contribute. So if you're a Postgres user, you might consider helping out in one of the commit fests. Um, maybe you could persuade your boss to spend Friday afternoon doing uh, some review work or uh, some um, some other kinds of contribution. <coughs> um, so we're looking for uh, open source contributors of all uh, different kinds. Uh, one of the most valuable things you can do is submit good bug reports. Now I would guess that about 10% of bug reports would be classified as good. Okay, Good as in the sense of uh, it mentioned a, uh, a bug in a way that is reproducible by the developers. Okay? Uh, if somebody said, I had this funny error message and then it went away, you go, okay then, thank you for that. Um, if you submit a script uh, and all of the preconditions uh, to recreate that bug, then that means we can run that script and we can fix that bug straight away. The analysis time for bug reports far outweighs the bug fix time in most cases. So it's actually, when you pay a company for support, you're mostly paying for the al analysis time, not necessarily the bug fix time. Okay? Obviously, you need skill to do the bug fix, but you need time to do the analysis. So if you submit a vague bug report to an open source list, you can be pretty sure that nobody's going to spend a lot of time on that. Okay? So people pay attention to people that submit bu good bug reports. So if you're the type of person that submits a very vague bug report uh, and then you argue with the person that's trying to help you, you can be pretty much assured that you'll be ignored the next time you submit a bug report. Okay? So uh, please uh, contribute. Um, bug reports, they're, they're particularly important. They're almost as important as uh, new feature designs and requests. Uh, but new feature requests are useful and good if you're thinking about them in a particular way. Um, I remember that uh, somebody submitted a bug report once that they wanted an unvacuum. And I remember we all laughed and and there was lots of joking around on the thread. Um, and then somebody else uh, 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 phrased, n not on that thread, but on a separate thread, they said, what we'd actually like to be able to do is uh, roll the database system back to a previous point in time so that we could recover missing data uh, and, and when it's phrased in that way, it's the same feature request, but one feature request got rounds of laughter, and the other one came out with a, blimey, that's a good idea, we should think about doing that. Uh, so if you spend some time thinking about what your feature request is, think about some of the problems, and then describe it neatly to people, then you'll actually get a lot more traction uh, than obviously the guy that submitted the unvacuum request uh, probably left thinking that you know the the postcodes project was full of ignorant savages that laughed at his brilliant ideas. Um, who knows? Anyway, 
So the project structure is that there's a, a core to Postgres, but then there's lots of other projects surrounding it. So it, it may be that uh, if you wanted to contribute, you could contribute uh, via one of the drivers or perhaps by writing an extension. Uh, and in, in many cases, that's a lot easier to do. So uh, some people uh, decide that they want to be a core code contributor. And really, that's in some senses the wrong way around. You need to have uh, a, a, a feature that you'd like to build before you can become uh, a contributor in a particular area. So you need to know where you're going to discuss things, because all of the open source development happens on mailing lists. Some of it happens person to person, uh, but most of it is happening in the public eye on particular mailing lists. So you need to go to particular places. Now, if you turn up on hackers asking for help with a SQL command, you will be mostly ignored and told to go somewhere else. If you come up and start discussing code, then uh, people will be interested in what you're saying and will listen and uh, you can progress from there. So there's lots of different places to discuss what it is you want to talk about. So please try to uh, get that right in the sense of if you go to the wrong place and discuss a great idea, you may well be ignored. Okay? Uh, whereas if you discuss it in the correct place, people may well listen. <coughs> uh, all of the contributions to Postgres are tested on a build farm. So one of the things that uh, you need to appreciate is that any code you do write will need to be portable. And if you say, uh, well, I can't be bothered to make it work on Windows, then that's probably going to lead to an automatic rejection of your ideas. Okay? So you need to be uh, even-handed, open, and uh, uh, aware that things need to run in lots of different ways. Uh, the test coverage of Postgres uh, is not uh, all green, as you can see. So one of the contributions that you might make is uh, submitting new tests that allow us to, uh, to uh, test different parts of the server. Um, you might also learn from this uh, which parts of the code are new, uh, which uh, types of things are, are worthy of being extended. Anyway, some further information. <clears throat> if you want to submit a patch, uh, make sure you discuss it in the right place. Discuss it on hackers first. If you write a patch first and then submit it, that's usually considered the wrong way around and it's got more chance of rejection. Okay? Uh, depends how you phrase it. If you say, I've put together this prototype of an idea, I wonder if anybody's interested in this direction of research and thinking, could, we, uh, could you help me uh, to make this into a full feature, then you may get some traction with that. You need to basically to agree a way forwards with uh, interested people, and that could be anybody. Okay? Um, some developers have been there a long time, and some people think that you need to get agreement from certain developers before you can move forwards. Well, uh, obviously, you need to get agreement from everybody before you can move forwards. It's what we call the consensus process. So there, there isn't agreement from a small number of people. You need to get ag agreement from everybody. Now, obviously, that means you need to approach things uh, in uh, an open way, uh, but you also need to explain things to people. If you are incredibly terse in your descriptions of how your new feature works, or, or, you, or you just simply don't give enough information, then you'll get no interest, and effectively your patch will be ignored. So uh, assuming you get interest uh, in your ideas, and you show a willingness to develop those ideas, then you can write them and publish them. And you will then need to wait for review. Uh, and uh, as I've said there, uh, you need to uh, be prepared to be very patient. Okay? Patience does not mean sitting there waiting for two years without a reply. 
what I mean is uh, if somebody appears in your mind that they are hostile to your ideas, bear in mind that it may be just in your mind, okay? Because somebody has written down on, a, on an email that that will not be possible. That does not mean, uh, actually, I personally dislike you, I think most of what you've said is rubbish, and I never want to see you again. It doesn't mean that at all, okay? In many cases, you could imagine that the person saying it has a kind of kindly interest in what you're doing and is kind of leaning over you and going, yeah, I like your ideas, but that's probably not going to work. You know? And if you imagine that, that the responses you get are helpful and interested, you will then respond to them well and come forward with new versions. Okay? Um, you can usually tell how old somebody is by uh, the hostility of their reply um, and um, sometimes you know uh, even minor comments are perceived as as negative uh, which is a shame so you will need to listen to what people say about your work uh, and the other way around is you need to give good review criticism. Now, it's, you know, it's easier said than done, and sometimes people phrase things in a way that uh, leads to hostility, um, but that's okay. You know, it, it's, it's, it's easy to apologize if you've said the wrong, wrong thing. Some people find apology uh, particularly difficult, but actually it's quite easy. You just say, oh, I'm sorry, did, did we misunderstand each other there? Let's, let's move on. So, <coughs> uh, developing the changes is the easy bit. You can do that on planes, trains, and at home. Um, so there's always time for development. Um, if you're the sort of developer that uh, considers compilation and testing uh, to be uh, you know, a slight nuisance, uh, and that actually I've hacked up a good patch, uh, but I haven't yet compiled it to see if it will work, uh, then obviously, uh, our relationship is not going to go far, uh, so please think about uh, validating your changes. Uh, you need to include documentation, okay? Anybody that believes that documentation is the thing that you do last in a software project has not written good software. Um, because if you write down what the software is supposed to do, Okay, that means that all of the people that you're working with can read that uh, uh, commentary, understand what it's doing, they can comment on the design, and they can also help you test it. Okay? If you haven't written anything down about your patch, it's extremely difficult to A, work out what it's supposed to do, uh, how it does it, and uh, C, uh, can we test it to check that it does that. Now, even though I say that, and we all laugh, regularly every commit fest I read about five or ten patches where I'm trying to work out what the patch actually does, and I can't work it out. You know, there's like pages of code, and sometimes there's comments in the code, you know, saying like, well, it's time to call that function, or, but there's nothing in there that says, why did you do it this way? You know, why did you write the code like that? Why didn't you add it to the JDBC driver, for example? You know, an explanation of why you added that code there, an explanation of what this thing actually does. Why are you trying to do it? You know, I know that it might be crystal clear to you that you say like, oh, well, uh, this adds some catalog function or something. Yes, but why? You know, what is the purpose of what you're trying to achieve? So one of the biggest uh, and most stupid ways that you can get your patch rejected is to design something, uh, write it, but then just describe the design so poorly that we go about six months batting the patch backwards and forwards before somebody goes, oh, you're trying to do that. Oh, we already do that over here. Yeah? And then your patch is rejected instantly on the basis of its uh, uh, duplicate functionality. Now that's just a stupid waste of your time. Yeah? 
So please don't do that, okay? Uh, it's not because the PostgreSQL project is, is particularly anti-new contributions, far from it. We want that contribution, okay? But you need to help other people understand that your contribution is a good one, okay? So, <coughs> uh, over the development uh, of your patch, uh, you will need to uh, maintain different versions of that patch. And I recommend that you use some form of repository uh, for that development because very probably at some point you will extend your work and then go, oh no, that's rubbish, I have to backtrack. Okay? So the likelihood that you're going to reuse some of the work that you uh, did earlier in your project is quite high. Uh, so make sure you keep all the different versions of your code uh, and also make sure that uh, other people have got access to those other versions because somebody might see your new version and say, actually, now that you've done that, I can see the way you had it originally was actually the best way. Please, could you go back to version 14 uh, and, uh, and use, that, use the code from there? Uh, obviously, other people are developing things at the same time, so uh, you're going to need to rework your patch, rebasing it uh, on a repo or changing it in many times in response to, uh, to other commits in the uh, code base. So a lot of the work these days happens via the CommitFest application and uh, you will see that uh, you need to submit uh, a patch uh, the patch has a particular status and once it's been reviewed it may be passed back to you so it'll go through needs review back to waiting on author and then if people finally agree it will be set to ready for committer uh, where a committer will then swoop in and uh, in a lot of cases they don't commit the patch. Okay because that may well be the first time uh, that one of the committers has seen that work and they may find problems that earlier reviewers did not see. So being set to ready for committer is actually just a later stage in the process but it's still no guarantee that it's going to be accepted. If your work does not have a reviewer, find one. Don't just sit there and wait uh, for your work to be reviewed. Uh, you need to work with other developers and it's a common thing to do to swap reviews. Obviously, if you're going to rate each other's work golden and uh, things like that, then that is going to be spotted and uh, effectively the, those review comments will be ignored. So you need to work with somebody that's going to give you honest, critical reviews of the work that you're doing. Um, and if you can't uh, find somebody, you can write to people that you've not met, say, hello, I'm working on a patch, could you do this? Um, unfortunately, I do get quite a lot of emails saying, could you mentor, mentor me as a developer? And I have to say, well, I'm sorry, I'm uh, fairly busy, uh, so probably no. Uh, the patch review process is available on the wiki. Uh, there's lots of information on the wiki and you need to read it and understand it. Uh, there are various types of review that take place on a patch. So you may think that just because somebody's gone through your patch line by line and found no problems with it, that therefore it is ready for commit. Uh, one of the big things I find is that the design of things uh, is actually uh, fairly poor and that we wouldn't want to accept that particular design. The code's great, the design is not. Yeah? So there's various levels at which things could be accepted or rejected. So have a read of that and understand the different types of review. So um, overall uh, the development process is about achieving an end goal. Uh, we're interested in moving forward uh, the Postgres project. It is not a demonstration of your technical coding prowess. Okay? Um, this is not a step on your career ladder. Uh, it might become so, uh, but if that's the approach that you're going to take, 
then you're probably not going to be as successful uh, as if you actually think about the needs of other people. Uh, so what I can tell you is if you want to have something accepted, uh, focus on real needs so that you've got a good problem analysis, you've got a good design uh, for how you can solve that problem, uh, and then good project management of your own contribution. Make sure you respond to people in a timely manner, make sure you're responding in a, uh, in a, a polite and useful manner. So we're looking really for a brilliant execution here. Okay? So this is not some like uh, reality TV show, some cookery, uh, cookery show where like one person gets asked to leave the program after every commit fest. Okay? It's not, it's not a game, right? We're interested in improving the software. And if you want to be a contributor, and we want you to be a, you to be a contributor, then it's possible uh, for everybody to, to get involved. So think about the project management aspects of this as well. Um, so if that, that might mean that you need to plan to spend every Monday night on it for three months or something in order to, to get it to flow correctly. Okay? So, so think about all of those aspects as well when you develop uh, something. So it's a database, and as you might expect, it's all about persistence. It will take some time to get your work accepted, but we want to see that work in Postgres. Okay? Uh, I ask you uh, very much to pay forwards. If you've used Postgres, if you've benefited from it in your company uh, or your career, uh, then do something to contribute back to the project uh, that helped you in that way. Uh, and remember that uh, the Postgres project is a team and uh, that we're interested in having everybody work together as a team in order to make solid contributions uh, to PostgreSQL. So uh, I'm going to leave you uh, now. Uh, I'm going to pass over in a minute to uh, Peter that's going to talk about testing. Uh, but just uh, the final message is really that uh, uh, myself and many other people would like to see your contributions to the project. Uh, and uh, if you can see your way clear to adding to the project in some way, shape or form, uh, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much.